Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand.
just falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Yes. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see victory.
Thank you, Jesus, for your presence in this place right now.
Just keep singing that. Just keep singing just that part together. Show us your glory, Lord. You know what's so powerful about our voices joining together? It's because it's a glimpse of heaven. It's a glimpse of all tribes, all nations, in one place, singing, giving glory and praise to God. It's the cry of our heart. God, show us your glory here and now. Show us a measure of your presence here and now. We want to experience you. We want to know you. We want our lives to be changed by you. You sound so beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Well, in this beautiful presence of the Lord, I'm just going to invite you to be seated. It's so wonderful to be back together. For those of you who are online, we are so happy you're joining us online as well. And today we're doing our very first sort of trial service in all of our campuses with some leaders and volunteers just to see how church is going to be in this new season with all of the safety measures and restrictions that have been placed on us. And, you know, again and again, as I've been praying and seeking the Lord this week, because, you know, probably you like me, I don't like all of this separation. I don't like all of these restrictions. But God just kept saying to me over and over again, I have no restrictions. My presence has no restrictions. You have been in your houses, but I have been moving. You maybe have been separated, but there is no separation from my presence. When the Holy Spirit fell, there's no separation from the presence of God. He's with us everywhere. And that has brought me great comfort in this time and in this season. Well, if you're online and you're joining us for the first time, we just want to encourage you to connect with us by using our digital connect card at connect.lifecenter.org because we'd love to get in touch with you and just share more about what Jesus is doing and, and just see how we can bless you and serve you in this next season. And we want to offer, starting today, live prayer. Now, we can't do it by laying on of hands, sadly, right now. But what we're going to do is that if anybody needs prayer for anything at all, whether you're here today or whether you're joining us online, if you want to call any of our Life Center locations, leave a message on the prayer extension. Someone from our prayer team will give you a call back today and pray for you in person. That's just another way that we can serve you and minister to you during this season. So if you need prayer for anything, please don't hesitate. It would be our honor to pray with you today. And we just want to take a moment to thank you for your faithful giving. We do want to let you know that if you're here in the building, we do have the giving stations open for debit and credit, and they're sanitized there as well, giving online using the give button at lifecenter.org. But we so thank, we're so thankful for your generous giving and your continued tithes and offerings. All right. At the beginning of the service, I asked if there were any prayer requests online and a few people wrote in. And so we're just going to take a minute and just lift up the prayer requests that have come into our online community and also on the prayer wall at lifecenter.org. So would you join me together as we lift up these requests? And if, if you are carrying any specific requests or burdens, if there are loved ones in your life that you are praying for, just lift those requests up to the Lord as we pray together. Well, Father, we thank you again for today. It's one step of many in being back together. And we're so grateful for what you are doing in our lives. God, we thank you that there's no limitation to your presence. We thank you that there's no restrictions to what you can do in our lives. And God, we need to lean into you. God, just as much now as ever, God, for healing and for breakthrough and for all that we have need of. God, I specifically want to lift up Mike, who is in the hospital. Father, you know what he is going through, and I pray you would minister to him right now in his hospital room. God, we pray for ra racial reconciliation. We pray literally for the eradication of racism on the earth, God. And we, as followers of you, want to be a part of that mission. So, God, we lift up our black brothers and sisters, God, and all that they have gone through in the last few weeks, God, with everything that has stirred up in our world. And, Father, 
Father, we pray that you would use us to break racism once and for all in Jesus' name. God, we pray for Marlene, who is diagnosed with breast cancer this week, God. And we pray that you would bring comfort to her and strength. And God, we pray for your healing power to touch her body. God, from our prayer wall, we lift up Sharice, who needs healing in her throat and thyroid. God, we lift up Christina, who twisted her ankle this week. And we lift up Andrea, who's needing a healing breakthrough. God, we pray for healing for all of these things. And Jesus, we pray for those who are experiencing financial needs and who need a breakthrough in their finances or who need a job. God, would you make a way where there seems to be no way? You are our provider. You are our provider. So we look to you for all our needs. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, I want to hear you. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. So listen up. This is very, very exciting. Next Sunday, Father's Day, Father's Day, there's got to be something significant about that. We are officially back. All our regular service times, yes, at all of our locations, we are open. Now, it's going to be a little bit different. There's going to be social distancing. We've got all the practices to keep you safe, and you're going to have to register online. Registration will open up tomorrow, on Monday. Every Monday, the new registration for the following Sunday will open up. So you will have to pick the service pick the campus and register ahead of time because we can only have 30% capacity of our building, okay? Now, this week, we've got a couple of things coming up. On Wednesday night, we have an all-church Zoom call. And we just want to connect with you guys on Zoom to share everything that's going to kind of unfold in the next few months. We've got a plan. We're ready. We're prepared. And we want to um, let you guys in on all of that. So, but you do have to register for the Zoom call. So if you can go on lifecenter.org slash events and register for the Zoom call, that would be amazing. All right, we are also receiving so many submissions for Father's Day. If you want to send in a video of your kids blessing our dads, you can do that. There is a link, so if you don't have the link, you can email one of us, we'll send you the link. And we, what we're looking for is for your kids to say, Dear Dad, and then share what they love about their dad. If you could send that in, we're going to put a really cute video together for Father's Day next week. Just want to remind you that if you have kids, that our Facebook Life Kids page has tons and tons of things going on there every single day, and particularly on Sunday for our kids. And we've got the Life Kids Family Puzzle Challenge going on right now, and there are prizes, so if you have kids, make sure you are participating. Now, there's two things I want to let you know for students coming up. This Friday night, there will be a live service. This Friday night, we have students. We're back, so if you have students, there will be a live service, 7 o'clock, and we are so excited, so excited to have our students back. And the second one is that if you have a student graduating, whether grade 6, grade 8, grade 12, or even college, we want to celebrate. We know that our students have lost a lot, especially the ones that are graduating, and we want to celebrate them. But you have to register, because we're going to make it really, really special. And so you have to go ahead and register at lifecenter.org. So... If you don't know where to find that, email any of us and we will get you the links for that. All right. I think I covered everything. I think we've got it. So I'm going to invite Pastor Jason up now. And he is going to uh, continue in our equipping series, which is a timely, timely, timely series for what God has in store for us in the future. But he also is just going to unpack, Jay, would you unpack a little bit about home church? We kind of unrolled a little bit about that online this week and, and then dive in. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. We don't have to physically distance, just you go left or right, it doesn't much matter. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know what it's got, you know, until it's gone. So. I haven't cried in 13 weeks. <laughs> Canada and Cornwall, those of you joining online, it's wonderful. It's so good to be with you. It's Life Center. We recognize with 30%, it's great. 
Um, but as a community, we're going to have to gather. Don't worry, I'll get my voice in a minute. But we're going to have to gather uh, in. We're going to have to gather online. We're going to have to gather in home campuses. So, what is a home campus? Well, if you understand what a life group is, it's really just simply transferring it to the Sunday morning, where together you and I can uh, gather in groups of ten. Uh, if people are within your bubble, then of course you don't have to require physical distancing if you chose a, ha a house campus that way. However, if you invited anybody who was not in your bubble of 10, then of course all the same uh, whys and acronym applies of physical distancing, masks and hand sanitization, staying six feet apart, all of those things. Because, you know, together when we look in Acts chapter 2, verses 46, uh, 46 and 47, don't worry, it's not going to come on the screen. I just added it. Um, and it says, and day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. And so it was both of those things, a day by day in houses, but also in the temple. So temple could be Canada, could be Cornwall, could be Orleans, and then, of course, house to house, and then breaking the bread homes. It says they... Um, it says they, so if you're in the chat, you can just write the word they. If you're here live, you can just say it in your heart. Um, but they received, not just you. So we recognize that one of the things that's so hard in a pandemic is that it's isolated so many of us. And there will be some of us uh, of our community who need to remain, um, for health reasons, just separated. And so there's no shame in that for you to gather online. But there is just something powerful about the they part of the scripture, right? That they come, they got together and um, it says, and the Lord added to their number day by day, those who were being saved. And so together it is that they and that them. And so as our strategy moves forward, we are going to be looking at still doing services online, which we did before anyways, and we're just continuing those. Uh, we have 30% capacity at each of our campuses in Cornwall, Canada, and here in Orleans. And then we also have the idea of house campuses where we have lawn signs that you can actually put out that this is a house campus of Orleans. Life Center has always been a multi-site church, so why don't we just add a few more campuses? We're not saying that you're a pastor <laughs> on staff. We're just simply saying you've opened up your house. When do I get paid? That's the real question. No, we're not, we're not, we're not, saying, we're not saying that. We're just simply saying that you've opened your house and... And uh, you can engage that week. And so uh, last week, uh, Lori and I, uh, Pastor Lori and I shared the first part of our equipping season that we're in right here, uh, which was you watch me, okay? You watch me. And once again, before I go there, uh, hands up in the chat, hands up, the little hands up emoji, because over the last two weeks, and then here we can just clap it, but in the last two weeks, or in Canada, you can clap it, uh, 11 people have given their hearts to Christ in the last two weeks. So hands up in the chat. We are so grateful for that. And so with last week, we looked at you watch me, and this week we're looking at together we get it done as this whole heart of equipping. You know, equipping really means this. When we say that we talk about the value of equipping, we are saying that we grow people who make a difference by inviting everyone to be involved in ministry. We believe in something called the priesthood of all the believers. Uh, so we invite everyone to be involved in ministry because every believer in Jesus is a builder. You're not just a body. You're a builder, every one of us. Or we're not just a body, we're a build. We're called to build this. And it takes the whole church to be his church in the city. It takes the whole church. And honestly, never has this been more felt than in this season. It's not like it's more true in this season because it's always true regardless of what season we're in. But never has it felt, been felt, needed more than in a season like this. You know, speaking of seasons, here's one of the things that's significant, is that God always shapes us by using people, events, and circumstances. God always shapes our lives and our character by using people, events, and circumstances. What is unique about the time and season that you and I find ourselves living in today is that we are collectively and simultaneously experiencing both a global pandemic and a global outcry for racial injustice to end. We are not experiencing these things individually. As the entire globe, we are experiencing these things together. 
And there is something significant when something happens that captures the whole world's attention that we as followers of Jesus must, must pay attention to. And so this global pandemic that we're experiencing and this outcry for racial injustice or, or racial justice, I should say, injustice to be destroyed and for there to be true biblical justice, true justice for every nation, every tribe, every kindred, and every tongue is part of a move of God. Church, don't miss the move of God that is happening all around the world just because it doesn't look like you think it should have looked. What God is doing is radically significant for this time and for this season. You know, if those of you in the chat, you can type the word that this season is that none of us want to hear anymore. It is that beautiful word, unprecedented. Exactly. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to type. You don't, some of you won't even type it because you don't want to hear it. I'm with you. But in the word that we don't want to say in this unprecedented season, I think one of the questions we should ask is what should the posture of our hearts be? And the only posture of our hearts should always be humble. We should have hearts of humility because God opposes the, pri- the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so I think that there's a story that is thousands of years old that has something important to teach us today. Can I just pause here for a moment? Those of you online, just give me a little moment right here. I am just not used to preaching to human beings. I'm out of rusty. (laughs) I'm used to looking right at a camera. It's just me and a camera. That's it. So even just your stares are throwing me off. (laughs) Stop staring that way. I kid. But I think that there's this story in 1 Samuel chapter 3 that is significant for all of us. Again, it's thousands of years old, but how many of you know that God's principles are timeless? And there's a story in 1 Samuel chapter 3, there's a high priest by the name of Eli, and he has two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and he is also raising a boy by the name of Samuel. Uh, Samuel's mother was a woman named Hannah, who was barren, and she pleaded, and God opened her womb. And during this process, she she said to the Lord that if God did this, that she would raise her son as a Nazarite. In other words, she would raise her son separate from and consecrated to God, and that's Samuel. And it's interesting. So, So Samuel is growing up with the high priest, Eli. And I said, Eli has two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Yes, like the show, Phineas and Ferb. Uh, but he has these three sons. Two of those are biological, and one is uh, given to him to raise, because, of course, the high priest was the closest you could get to the presence of God. And so Samuel's being raised as a Nazarite. And here's what the Scripture says. All three of them were raised in the same household. Hophni and Phineas says they had no regard for the Lord at all. But it says that Samuel ministered before the Lord. Isn't it remarkable that we can go, we, people can grow up in identical environments and have completely different outcomes? We can all experience the same things and they can make us bitter or they can make us better. We can all experience and see what we see, but see it so very differently because we don't see things as they are, that we see things as we are. And who you and I are are imperfect. Who you and I are are always in need of repentance and confession and transformation so that we can become more like Jesus. You know, there's a point here that I would make, which is simply that no one can make you the person that you aren't committed to becoming. I don't care what mentor, I don't care what group you sign up for, I don't care what coaching thing, you, what class, what whatever. No one will make you the person that you aren't committed to becoming. There is no level of accountability that can make you who you don't desire to become. And here is Eli growing up in a house, and he has Hophni and Phinehas, and they have no regard for the Lord. They are the closest to the proximity of God's presence at the time, but they have no regard for it. And here you have Samuel growing up in the identical environment, and his heart is postured, and it's humble, and it's soft before God. Again, it's not only environment that creates us. It is also the hunger of our hearts of who we desire to be that is absolutely essential. So the scripture says, now the boy Samuel, this is 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 9, I'm reading. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. It wasn't non-existent, it was rare, because there was no frequent vision. And at that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. 
And it says, the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. That is such a beautiful picture. If you remember, if you know anything about the Old Testament, there's also a man by the name of Joshua. And it says that Joshua, when Moses would go into the tent of meeting to meet with God, he would hang out as close to God's presence. There is something about hunger in every one of our hearts that draws us closer to God's presence. And here we see Samuel. He does not yet know the Lord, but he has this insatiable hunger for God. He just hangs out where the ark of God's was, representative of the presence. It says, then the Lord called Samuel and And the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I didn't call you. Go lie down again. And he went and he lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose, and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for the Lord called me, or for you called me, sorry. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Which is a line that I think many of us as parents have used in the last 13 weeks a lot. Uh, Not lie down again, more like, hey, go go to your room. That's been a line that we've used often. And in fact, in in my house, it's been more, I'm just going to go to my room. (laughs) Yeah. Therefore, Eli said again, oh, sorry. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. So he can hear who's calling, but he can't recognize who's calling. There are a lot of people in our world today who may be able to hear the principles of God, but they can't recognize God because they don't know his voice. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time. Have you noticed God does things in threes often? A third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. And because Eli was a man, it took him like three times to figure out what was going on. If it was a woman, he would have got, she would have got like right away. But <laughs> Then Eli perceived the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to the Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and he laid down. In his, place, in his place. You know, Samuel, as we made mention a moment ago, he can hear just fine. And he can respond just fine. Samuel never missed hearing God call him. Not one time. Being by the presence of God attunes his ear to hear. But again, how, why we need mentors and others in the faith who are a little bit ahead on the journey, again, is sometimes it's not that we can't hear, it's that we can't recognize the voice that we're hearing. Or we hear too many different things and we don't know which one to follow. You need someone, I need someone, we all need an Eli in our lives to help him know what he doesn't yet know. And it takes a person of humility. If you're in the chat, you can just type in humility. And if you're here, you can say it in your heart. But it takes a person of humility to admit that you don't know what you don't know. You don't know. We live in a world full of pride where one person reads one article and they're an expert on a subject. We need a heart of humility as followers of Jesus in this time and in this season that we find ourselves in. But we need more than hearts of humility. We need Eli's. We need people to help us hear the right voice in a season. Come on, have you ever gone through something in your life and you have so many thoughts and emotions and feelings swirling in your head. It's not that you can't hear. It's that you can't distinguish which one is true or most true or to follow in a different season. And this is what we see here in the story. is that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Because the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. See, having a clear purpose... We've had an explosion of people who want to know their purpose and purpose and purpose and purpose. You can have a clear purpose and still not make any progress in your life. Because there are these appointed times and seasons where you and I need others to come alongside to help us grow. Every single one of us have growth gaps. Places where we are to where we need to be that we have to grow. Every one of us have gaps. The question is, do we have humility to learn from one another? 
Do we have humility to learn in this time and in this season? Do we have humility to learn from those whose skin color is different than ours, than mine perhaps, or yours if yours is looking like mine? Do we have humility when I scroll social media? One of the things we need is humility, not only pride to learn from different cultures, but different generations. I don't know about you. But the one thing that has ravaged my heart, and every life is precious, but to see what has occurred in long-term care homes, do we value different generations, whether it's in the womb or at the end of life? As a culture, we have to reckon with these things. As a church, we need a prophetic voice to listen to our Black or indigenous or people of color to speak about racism and injustice. And some of us have to be quiet and listen and learn for a season. And not for a post or two, for a season. And we have to reckon together with what do we really believe about life. This is part of this global move of God that is happening to reckon with what, what, how do we truly value one another? And I think when we're put as on the scales, we have been found wanting. And I wish I could say it was a problem out there, but as the church, we're often the identical problem. We're of the same substance of the world. So God, would you move in repentance in our hearts and our lives? Do we have humility? Do we have humility to learn from one another? Do we have humility to learn from different cultures, generations, even experiences? Again, Eli knows how to hear the voice of God speaking. It was rare, but it's something that he knows how to do. And Samuel doesn't know how to recognize it. And here's what I would say. When it comes to working together, stop looking for the perfect mentor. They don't exist. They just don't exist there are no perfect people. They don't exist. But you need to look for an Eli. Why do I say that? Because of what he's about to do sets him apart. See, Eli has two character traits that I think are really important for you and for I if we're looking for someone to mentor us, to help us grow when all of, well, in our growth gaps. First, Eli creates room for Samuel to recognize who is speaking to him. I'll say it again. Eli creates room for Samuel to recognize who is speaking to them. A mentor doesn't suck up all the air and talk all about themselves. Eli creates room for Samuel to learn and to recognize who is speaking to him. And second of all, Eli postures Samuel in the perfect position. And so what Eli does is significant. Here's what's fascinating. Eli does with Samuel what he can't do with his own sons. His own sons don't have hearts of humility before their father. They have no regard for the things of the Lord. But Eli does for others. Here's why I'm saying that. Because sometimes those who are closest to us like we talked about last week, the, the closer you get to someone, you know what you see? The good stuff and the bad stuff. The closer you get to someone, it's called a proximity problem that you begin to see, oh, they aren't all they, I thought they were. Oh, I, here's where they're good, here's where they're not good. And so we see a bit of that here in the text. The scripture says, we read it a moment ago in 1 Samuel 3 verse 9, Therefore Eli said to Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your what? For your servant. Here's, what do you want to try to find in a mentor? Somebody who can teach you and I how to be better servants. The only position of leadership in the body of Christ is servant leadership. There is no other kind. It doesn't exist, and anywhere it's not, it's not the right spirit of leadership. It's not the right spirit of mentorship. It's not the right spirit of parenting. It's not the right heart in all of those things. Servanthood isn't a starting posture. It's the only posture. 
If servanthood wasn't the single defining leadership lesson, like sorry, if servanthood was the single defining leadership lesson that Jesus taught his disciples at his last supper with them when he bent down and he washed their feet, then it is our most important and significant position our heart should be in as followers of Jesus as we're mentoring others. And it's one of the things I love about Eli is he helps Samuel recognize and grow, but he also positions Samuel again in this posture of a servant. Eli doesn't teach Samuel again to hear. He does that really well, but he teaches him to recognize recognize God's voice as different than all the other voices. And in this season of confusion in this season of upheaval and change that is so vital that is so necessary we as followers of Christ don't only need to know what a blog post said or what this article said or what this person said we also that's all good stuff or it may be but we also need to be able to hear God what is your word and what are your ways and what is your voice in this season of our lives Thank you. <laughs> you know, you can't use your voice, but you can use your hands if you want. It's okay. You know, as followers of Jesus, there's this powerful prophetic element in this story that I want to pull out for such a time as this. And it says, And the Lord came and stood, calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, what did he say? What Eli taught him to say. Speak, for your servant hears. Speak, for your servant hears. And then, it says, the Lord said to Samuel, because his heart is postured in the right place. Watch the first test God is going to give Samuel. This is the first time he hears God. You wait for the word that God's going to give him. The Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel at which two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. That's God basically saying, like, you're gonna, I'm going I'm to blow the doors off this dump. That's the paraphrased version. <laughs> On that day I will fulfill, watch this, I will fulfill against Eli. All that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end, and I will declare to him that I'm about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God. They were sleeping with temple prostitutes just outside the temple of, the God, of God. And it says, he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. It is this judgment that God brings in this moment of I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. I mean, that God can do what God wants to do. I'm grateful for grace. I'm grateful we're in the New Testament. I'm grateful for all of those things. But God is a God who is fully loving and Father and Abba and he is God who is holy and just and righteous. He is not either or, he is both and. And you don't want a little of both, you want all of who God is. Now I wonder if Samuel, and now in this moment, wishes he could go back and say, can I unhear, can I just not hear anymore? Like, right? Why is it so important that he's in the posture of a servant because of the word that God gave him? It says that Samuel then lays down until morning. It doesn't say that he slept. Because what does he have to go now? He has to go to the high priest and go, I have a word of encouragement for you from the Lord. I have a word that's going to build you up and edify you. I'm going to teach you how to live your best life. No, he's like, I've got to give the word of the Lord to you. And then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel, this is why you want to find an Eli. And this is the prophetic part, I believe, in this story for today. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, here I am. Same words. And Eli said, what, what was it that he told you? Like, what, what did God speak to you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me that he told you. We need the posture of Eli 
to be able to hear the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth sometimes. And for our black or indigenous or people of color who are speaking truth in this season, church, we need to hear the truth, not hide it from me. We need to sometimes see the truth of our culture, the truth of who we are, the truth of our systems, the truth of what is breaking down, the truth about whether it's life in the womb, the truth about how we treat those who are older, the truth about our pride and our arrogance and our indifference towards one another. We don't want to sanitize truth. We want truth because only truth sets us free. If not, we just continue. If Eli would have come and simply said, like, you know, if Samuel would have said, like, I, I, it's a hard word, and Eli would have said, hey, don't worry, about it. can you soften it for me? It doesn't matter how we say it. When God brings down the arm of justice, he's going to happen. And there was this moment here where there's this prophetic space in here where we need to have hearts of of Eli's to hear. He said, I'll keep reading. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord, Eli says, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. It was a hard word. But nothing that was said was untrue. But it was a hard word. And if you keep reading, you can get to the end of the story. But speaking truth that we need to hear, that we need to repent, and that we need to then do the work together of justice. And watch what happens if we have humility. Sorry, that's puberty. And watch what happens if we have humility. That's my favorite joke of all time. Uh, and, and position ourselves to listen and learn, as in the case of Samuel, in the case of Eli. It says, and Samuel grew. And this is my prayer. And may it be your prayer. And whatever church looks like in this season or the season ahead, here's all I know. If the Lord is with us, we're going to be all right. If the Lord is with us, we're going to be all right. But if he isn't, then there ain't no point in going forward. Because we're just making noise. If the Lord is with us, it's going to be all right. I know like you, when I can read history, here's, I, I can't give you clarity in, or I can't give you certainty of what the season ahead looks like, but I can give you clarity. Pandemics end. If you read history, they end. I can give you clarity that whether you're at home watching online, he is as close as the mention of his name. Whether you're in a house campus with a few friends or a family, God is present in your midst, though the kids may be running around and you're catching every eight-week words that I say. Look it, I've lived it. I know what it's like. If you're in Canada or Cornwall, or whatever church you're listening from, wherever you're listening from, the heart of equipping of us being the church is that we want to grow up. How many of you know that you can grow older and never grow up? The church can get older and it cannot grow. We want to grow up in God. So we want to grow and we want the Lord to be with us, which is both grace and truth. And here's what the scripture said about Samuel. He let none of his words fall to the ground. Like Eli, may the Lord give us humility to hear from others in this season. May the Lord give us humility to hear from others. Not only what we want to hear, what we need to hear. Not what we wish, but what we need. And then may the Lord continue to raise up Samuel's with the clarity to speak everything that God's word makes clear. May we not just in this season, but every season, be unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because that is the power of God into salvation. 
Church, together, we'll get it done. But it takes the whole church to be the church. It takes every single one of us loving God with our whole heart and loving our neighbor as ourself. And so sometimes loving our neighbor means wearing a mask. If you can, you have, if you have health issues that you can't, then we're not going to be judgmental. In the season going forward, church, we're going to be kind. Some people aren't going to be ready to come back to church, and there is no shame. Some people may gather with a few, and that's beautiful. Others may be comfortable to gather again, you know, practicing all the things we need to practice. And those are how we're going to love our neighbor. You know, the final thing I'd say this morning is this. We're used to doing church. Or some of you are going to come back next week for the first time to a campus. We're used to doing church to make everything convenient and just so you can experience God's presence and come right in and be celebrated. It's beautiful. I need you to know... (laughs) When you come back next week, it's going to be inconvenient. If you show up two minutes before, just do a bit of math. If 50 people show up two minutes before and it takes 30 seconds a person, we got ourselves a line. And that line's got to be six feet apart. And if it's raining, I can't control that. (laughs) And if send out an umbrella team, we can't. So there's going to be things that are going to be inconvenient, and here's what I want you to know. Don't see them as inconveniences. See them as love. By giving space and sanitizing our hands and checking in for services and doing all of those things, it is how we are trying to honor and love God, and it is how we're trying to love you Because there'll be a season when this season ends and we'll be back to hugging and umbrellas and we'll be back to like giving out treats and all these different things. But in this season, we don't have treats, we have hand sanitizer, so be blessed. (laughs) Let's pray as Pastor Lori comes. Heavenly Father in this place, may you give us hearts like Samuel. Lord, may we stop looking for perfect mentors because Eli certainly wasn't. He had his own kids that just did what they wanted to do. But Father, may we find not perfect people, but humble and submitted people who aren't afraid to confess and repent, create spaces and environments for us. Father, may we as the church be together as never before. In your name we pray. And if anyone's listening and watching today who doesn't know you, ah, Jesus, get a hold of their heart. Get a hold of their heart today. Because one day without you is one day too many. Speak, Lord. And then let them hear and recognize your voice through the clutter of all the other voices. And Father, give us hearts of humility to hear whether they are black or indigenous or people of color who are rising up for justice. Give us hearts to hear that are soft and responsive, God, and not just here to repent and to be committed to the work of transformation, the marathon ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you. So good. Oh. All right, if you're here and you're glad to be back, let me hear an amen. Amen. All right, if you're watching from the Kanata campus today and you're glad to be back, let me hear an amen. I heard it. (laughs) And if you're online and you enjoyed today's service, let me hear an amen. At home, come on. That's it. I love it. That's so good. Well, listen, we have a Make a Difference Challenge this week, just like every other week. And this week, this is our Make a Difference Challenge. It is big. But we serve a big God, don't we? And God, Jesus taught us to pray, 
on earth as it is in heaven. And so this week, we are going to pray. We are going to unite our heart in prayer for the eradication of racism. And we have three prayer points that we want to align our hearts with, and we're going to put them all over Facebook and social media and our website and all of that stuff. But we have three prayer points that we want to align ourselves to pray for. The first one is honesty, conviction, and repentance for where we failed our black brothers and sisters. The second one is to pray for strength and healing in the midst of this movement because it is not a sprint, it is a marathon. And we want to pray for full racial reconciliation in all forms. And so that's our heart, and we want to align ourselves. That's our Make a Difference Challenge this week. We want to invite you to continue to join us at 9 a.m. live every day on Facebook and Instagram for devotions and 12 noon for prayer. We are walking through our new version plan, the new normal. So if you haven't downloaded that from version, you can go ahead and do that. And every single day, it's exactly what we're praying. We're praying that we would have a new normal in this season and that our new normal would be what is normal to our God as we pray through the book of Acts. And again, I want to remind you, if you would like prayer today for anything at all, whether online or here, give us a call at any of our Life Center locations, and someone from our prayer team will call you back and pray with you. It would be our absolute honor to do so. We bless you. We thank you for joining us today. We pray that you have an amazing, amazing day. God bless.